OpenAI just closed the biggest funding round in venture capital history. Google spent $2.7 billion to bring back just one AI developer. Meta launched its own AI video generator, and the governor of California just banned AI regulation. All of that and more in this episode of AI News. We are trying a new format, so stick around and give it a shot. Things are heating up at OpenAI again. For starters, they raised the largest VC round ever, $6.6 billion, pushing their post-money valuation to $157 billion. The lead investors were Nvidia and Microsoft, and to put this in perspective, SpaceX is valued lower, but they've got rockets. But here's the interesting part. Sam Altman asked investors in OpenAI not to invest in any competing companies like XAI and Anthropic, and including any future startups founded by people leaving OpenAI. And quite a few have left already. Just before the funding round closed, Mira Muradi left to start her own thing, taking some top researchers with her. This happened just days before the deal was finalized. It seems like almost nothing is left of the original OpenAI team. Elias Iskever left, then Greg went on extended break, and now Mira Murati, who was advocating for Altman's return to the company after that scandal, is gone too. OpenAI is moving away from being non-profit and is now all about profit, and Altman is getting a 10% stake which at the current valuation is around $15 billion. Not bad. Interestingly, Apple dropped out of the round at the last stage, although they are still collaborating on Apple intelligence. What changed? One theory is a recent story about ex-Apple chief designer Johnny Ive collaborating with OpenAI on a new AI-focused device funded by Steve Jobs' widow, Powell Jobs. They might be building the next iPhone killer, or it could be in OpenAI's condition that investors can't invest in other AI companies, or Apple might already be working on their own AI models. We will probably find out soon. OpenAI also hosted Dev Day recently. The highlight was the real-time API. Now, developers can integrate AI into their products for basic model prices with real-time response speeds. During the event, they showcased the API calling a mock store to order 400 chocolate-covered strawberries. And soon after, guests were served with actual strawberries at the conference. But here is a flaw. It's convenient when the phone does everything for you. It can call to order strawberry and it it itself. They also launched WhisperTuber, a new version of their speech-to-text model that is eight times faster than before. It can transcribe two minutes of speech in just 12 seconds and supports 100 languages, and completely open source. In short, OpenAI is trying to dominate all markets – consumer, enterprise, and developer – at once. But that's not all. OpenAI also rolled out Canvas. It's similar to cloud artifacts, an interface for working on code or text. Let me show you how it works. Go to your profile, select the GPT-40 model with a canvas. For example, ask it to write a cover letter for a software engineering job. The response starts and a new canvas window appears. On the left, there is a chart and comments on changes. And on the right, there is space for working on text or code. There is also a small toolset in the bottom right corner. You can adjust the length from very long to very short with just one click and some cool visuals. Another feature I liked was a quickly reading level adjustment from kindergarten to graduate. And another nice touch is recommendation for changes. It's very clean and user-friendly interface. I really like it. I might have found a reason why Sora is still unavailable to the public. Sora's key developer, Tim Brooks, left for Google, following the rest. He will be joining the Google DeepMind to work on video generation technologies and world simulators, whatever that means. But overall, Google is still lagging behind in AI, especially in video generation. So. 
That's why they are trying to strengthen their team with a top talent and even willing to spend $2.7 billion just to bring back one developer. That's almost twice as much as Google paid for YouTube. That deal was with a character AI. Google paid not just twice in tech, but mainly to get their co-founder and gnome Shazir back on board. Shazir was a key AI figure in Google until 2021, but left after the company decided not to release a chatbot he co-developed named Mina due to ethical and safety concerns. And a year later, ChatGPT launched and Google missed the boat. So technically, Google could be the first in this race. But frustrated by Google's caution approach to AI, Shazir co-founded Character AI, which quickly became an AI unicorn. Now, after receiving hundreds of millions, Shazir returned to Google as vice president and head of development for Gemini AI, bringing a lot part of Character AI team. Make Google DeepMind great again. Character AI, after the deal, will stop making AI models and they will focus on building out their chatbot platforms for end users. One of Google's standout AI projects recently making waves is the update to their Notebook LM. Now you can upload any article or PDF and it will generate a podcast with two hosts who discuss a content in a conversational style and it's free. Let me show you how it works. I will use a recent paper called Levels of AGI for blah blah blah. I upload it to the Notebook LM and click Audio Overview. Just listen. One seems to be asking. How do we know when we've actually achieved artificial general intelligence, AGI? Right. Um, you've sent over paper that really digs into this, and I can't wait to unpack it with you. Yeah, what's fascinating about this paper is... Right, because it's not wow. like there's an agreed upon... Checklist. If I didn't know it was AI-generated, I would never have guessed. I'm impressed. But seriously, Enrich Carpusy also tested this feature and made a podcast on Spotify in just couple of hours. You would never tell it apart from other human-produced podcasts. There is so much content being created these days that it's getting overwhelming to keep up, and tools like these are only going to boost content production exponentially. Well, big news is also coming from the world of AI video generators. Pika has rolled out a bunch of updates to their model. Instead of focusing on photorealism or editing features, they dive in deep into visual effects. Think videos with explosions, smoke, or blow your mind effects. I think they were inspired by Gen 3's success with visual effects and launched their own. And it worked. They gone viral on social media. I tried it out too. And it's hilarious. Meanwhile, Meta launched their own AI video generator, MovieGen. It can generate videos based on text prompts, edit existing videos, and even add sound that syncs with their visuals. But for now, it's just like Sora. You can see it, but you can try it. Meta Chief Product Officer writes that the company is not ready to release this as a product anytime soon, as it is still expensive and takes too long to generate videos. Basically, they just wanted to say, hey, we are doing this too, but it's not ready yet. Mark Zuckerberg teased it on his Instagram and promised that it will be available on the platform next year. But for now, you can read their 92-page research paper. And while Meta is just teasing their AI video generator, Runway launched $5 million fund to support up to 100 AI-driven films. The films can be anything – feature lengths, shorts, documentaries, or music videos. Grants range from $1,000 to $1 million. It's a pretty cool opportunity. I wouldn't say that Manway's AI video generator is groundbreaking, but they do not require the whole film to be AI-generated. It just needs to include some AI elements. So, here is the genre idea. AI comedy. 
New Flux model from Black Forest Labs is a real game changer in the AI world. Codenamed Blueberry, it broke all records on the image arena, surpassing Midjourney and Ideogram in quality and speed. The new version generates images six times faster than the previous one and supports up to 2K resolution without losing accuracy or adherence to the prompt. It can create photorealistic images that are hard to distinguish from real photos. Let's try a few options. Prompt with a happy calling. Looks good and really fast. Another one. A juicy burger. Good. I like it. People talk that if you add words resembling photo file names to your prompt, the model produced images that look like real photos. Let's check it out. Wow, it's like it's like looking at someone's photo album. Kinda creepy to be honest. If you wanna test it yourself, you can try it out on Together AI. And while scientists are busy saving humanity, people are focusing on what really matters whether the partner is cheating me on Tinder. Now you can find out that just for 18 bucks using AI, input a name, location, and a few photos, and Cheetah Buster will locate the person Tinder's account in just 10 minutes. But be careful, you might not like what you will find. Many countries are now trying to regulate the AI industry to avoid future problems. Everyone's got their own approach. China tailors rules to party politics, Europe enforces strict regulations, and in California a bill on AI safety was recently debated, but the governor vetoed it. The bill required AI developers to take precautions to ensure that tech wouldn't lead to major cyber attacks or cause damages of $500 million or more. However, Google, Meta, Microsoft, and OpenAI opposed it, as they didn't like the baggy language that could lead to lawsuits. But on the other hand, supporters like Anthropic and Elon Musk think these measures are needed to prevent AI from being weaponized. Meanwhile, another law the governor did sign bans creating digital replicas of deceased actors without the consent of their successors. That's all for today. See you next week.